Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks, and this is another one of this paper 3D art. And again, I stole this idea from somebody that draws it by hand. It's unreal. I've emailed him, trying to contact him. I haven't got any word back yet. Thanking him for, I mean, he does uh, tons of these by hand. So the way I did it in Corel is I start off with a square and hold down the control button. And then I go up to object and I convert it to a curve. I get the shape tool and I select these two and right click and break them apart. Then I select that one and break it apart. And then I take the virtual segment delete key. So I have a side there, two sides of a square. Then I'm gonna take a two point line and I'm gonna draw it straight up and down. And then I'm going to click on it and move the rotation to here and rotate it to 45 degrees. And what I should have done previously, I should have already changed them to a, I'm gonna change these to a black hairline and then set my pen tool on a black hairline. And to do that, I'm just gonna, with nothing selected, I'm gonna go over here, go to graphic, set it on black and a half a point. So now every line I draw will be like that. Now I'm going to take another two point line and I'm gonna go from there to there and from there to there, make sure you're on the node. And then I'm gonna take the smart fill tool and fill that in and nudge that out of the way. Then I'm gonna take a two point line and just make a, not the freehand tool, the two point line and make a little dash right there, holding down the control button. And I just noticed I'm a little bit off on that line so I can fix that. And I'm just making some lines. Let's go ahead and fix that while we're here. That line needs to be right on that corner. Now I can take this line, hold down the shift key and get that line go up to effects and blend. I'm gonna blend it six times, so I have eight of them. I'm gonna select that line and that line and apply. And all I'm using those for is reference points. Now, it doesn't really matter, but this is how he did it in the drawing. So I'm gonna take a two point line. I'm gonna go from that node to the center node and then go from that node. It's kind of in the middle, but it's not really in the middle. Now we need to take this line here. And I'm gonna hit the plus sign on my keyboard and I'm gonna move that line up to there. I don't think I got it exactly on the node and I didn't. So let's just grab it with the, actually it should be better if you had the two point line or the square or the four, hit the plus sign, make another one and just moving it up. So all I'm doing is make them at that same angle. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that line because it's longer and hit the plus sign. Let me zoom in here a little bit. And let me grab that line. I just made a copy of it, bring it there. And I could control D and make a duplicate because these lines are spaced out perfectly, but for this case, I'm going to do this like this. Now I'm going to take the virtual segment delete key and delete these lines that I do not want in the drawing. Almost there. Now we need to do the same thing to the other side. So I'm going to take this line right here and I'm gonna hit the plus sign and put it there. Tell you what, I'm gonna hit the duplicate this time and the duplicate again and it worked. Now we gotta go back with the plus sign. Now I can hit the control D and duplicate. And now we need to take the virtual segment delete key and delete these lines that are crossing it. And you could I could have probably figured out the length and done it by length, but this is pretty easy. Uh, I'm 
make sure I don't, I might have already messed up. Yep, I should have had that line. Because um, this is half of it, I should have. But what we can do is now take the shape tool and just select that line and put it there. And I think we're there. Yep. Now take your virtual segment delete key and delete these lines. Now we need to draw some lines and they need to be perpendicular to these lines. I'm a little bit off on that, but that's good. So I'm going to take the two point line. I'm going to go from that intersection, start moving it, then hold down the control button. Start moving it, hold down the control button. I see one more line I need to take away and then do this. Well, we can get the virtual segment delete key since we're here You go and delete that. Now we're going to take another two point line and go from there straight up. So I'm holding down the control button and then take the virtual segment delete key and delete this. This is probably the hardest part from here on out. It's pretty easy. Now we can take this blob and you could play around with this and make it different shades, but I'm going to put it right there. And it's already in the back of the page, so it's it's working. Now we need to make a shadow. And the way I found to do that is just to take the rectangle tool and go from there to there and then over to there. Nudge that shadow just out of the way. Fill it in with black. Go to your shadow tool and just set a shadow off. And you could fuzzy it up or whatever you want or make it lighter or darker. That's pretty good. Now we need to break that shadow apart. And now what I want to do is put this shadow. Let's grab the corner and see if it won't snap to the corner. Grab both these and I'm going to go back minus, whoop, the opposite, front minus back. And that all depends on, you know, which one you drew first and whatever. Have that snap to that and there's your shadow. Now, I actually want to draw lines everywhere, but we're going to cut some of those lines out if I remember how to, to do that at the end of the video. So just take a two-point line, holding down the control button, and then control D and make a duplicate and move that over to that line. And now you can control D all the way across. Now, on these lines that are past there, just grab them and extend them out. Doesn't really matter how far. Now I could probably group all those together and and do it like that and actually mirror it, but I'm gonna do it like I made it the first time. Take a two-point line and move it down here. And now we can control D and make a duplicate. Moving the line up there, and then control D and keep going, control D, just a couple extra, it doesn't really matter. We actually need to make control D and make it a duplicate. I'll tell you what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to take that line away. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Control D and make a duplicate and move it down to that corner, then control D, control D, control D, and then grab these lines and extend them out. Whoop. I grab the shadow. That didn't work. Let me back it up. I need to just stretch them and not grab them. Now you're going to want to take your scissors and you're going to want to cut like where that edge is over. So we're going to, we're just going to take the virtual segment delete key and delete the line that you would cut with the scissors. And then he did one, cut one more line and cut these off. And then the same thing over here, about the same amount of lines. Now, and you could actually cut off the, well, so now you got your scissors. Let's go ahead and, uh, Let's do this. Let's virtual segment delete key these lines and this little bit of a nib. Now we should be able to select it all 
and put a boundary around it. So that's what your paper is going to look like cut out. So you're going to cut there, 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 there. And then you'll be amazed. And I've shown this to a couple people tonight. It looks only that good through the lens of your camera. And I took that with my phone. If you look at it with the naked eye, the pyramid doesn't look that short. So for a piece of regular paper, and you could print it on your printer, that's a pretty cool 3D effect, uh, cheaply and pretty amazing. I hope that helped a little bit. Thank you for watching.